Um, what we're gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna run through something really quickly and then Paul will, will give us a presentation about that AAR group and then we'll close with Todd giving an overview. And then again, for Patrick, um, for anybody that doesn't have lab safety training, when we end today, we'll go, um, we'll have a, a brief uh, lab safety training so everybody will be legal to be in the, in the lab and stuff. Um, okay, I wanna tell you guys, uh, so it's, it's really, I'm old, right? I'm all old and fat and stuff now. And so, um, so I have all this perspective. I'm like Yoda and stuff. Um, but one of the things that's become very clear to me as I've gotten older is it's, it's hard to appreciate stuff a lot of times when you're in the midst of it. And it's very easy to think that what you're experiencing is the norm and is, is sort of, you know, the sort of par for the course, if you will. What's going on here is totally not the norm. This is very different from just about everywhere else. And um, it might not seem that way because you're in here, oh, just sign up for this class, take this class, but this is, this was, this is different from what most of your colleagues in other uh, universities um, have access to. And so I just want to run through real quickly our history, uh, briefly how we got to this place, and then Paul will start on showing you some more actual stuff stuff. So we have a couple unique things here at CSUCI. Um, some of the policies in history I'll go over in a second, but, but suffice it to say we have policies that are being emulated by other universities across the state now. Um, and so that's pretty cool that we, we thought we were behind and in fact we were kind of leading the pack uh, in a sense. We have a whole bunch of unique facilities here. So we won't be able to probably use them all over the course of this semester, but if you guys do are interested in this and start helping out more in our, our aerial and aquatic robotic research group, you will get to see those. We have, we have a landing strip out on our research station on uh, Santa Rosa Island, which is unique. We have a landing strip here on campus for model airplane clubs. It was built 25 years ago. Most people don't have that kind of thing. Where the, the Maritime Academy is a smaller, numerically a smaller campus than we are. But with the exception of them, and they're, they're a bit of a different, uh, different uh, thing compared to most CSUs, as far as the quote unquote regular or normal CSUs, we're the smallest, yet we're the fourth largest in terms of the amount of area that we own. So we have a huge swath of land. We have Cayugas Creek, we have all this great potential place we can use as an outdoor laboratory to fly our robots, test stuff, calibrate. That's unique. Um, we also have a bunch of partnerships and the folks you see sitting here are but one example. So, so Todd uh, and his relationships, Paul and his relationships, everybody, we, 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 we have a disproportionate, for as small as we are, we have a huge number of ties to different uh, professional groups, industry, technology folks, and so, so that's pretty cool. And I would say we have a, a pretty unique uh, talent pool. We don't have an engineering program. In most universities, this type of thing would be housed in an engineering department. And it would all come out of, of that tradition. And we're coming at it from a tradition of we just want to use this tool, right? And so that's, that's uh, pretty cool that we've found this tremendous talent around us that has helped us uh, do what otherwise would be a challenge. Uh, the other thing to say is that this, is the, this course is the first of a series of courses, but more importantly, this course is um, a very different approach than most of our colleagues are taking. So this is open to everybody. Any of you guys can take it. Mostly, it's either you have to pay a lot of money if you're from the general public, uh, or you have to be an engineering student, uh, you know, a systems programming kind of student, something like that. We are coming at this first and foremost as an educational, uh, from an educational mission. So, so we invite everyone in to come in and learn. Again, we're very applied. So we've, we've been doing some basic research in, in this and that, but really we're more about, uh, we don't so much care about what we're flying, we want the data. We wanna know, is that beach eroding? Uh, how many coyote are on that hill, and we don't really care about how we get to it. So we're really applied in the sense of what we're doing. Whereas many of our colleagues that do kick butt work, their whole research is how do I program the, the UAV to stay up in the air, which is cool, great set of skills. That's not what we're really interested in. We're interested in using the technology. Um, and I think that's why uh, it's a good fit for you guys that are looking for jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. One point on the use of the technology, like me being around and I think everybody here could speak to it as well is that I've been to a lot of different demonstrations of equipment from companies who have developed all this really cool stuff. Um, I've been 
on site with different governmental agencies like the Coast Guard, the Navy, NOAA, all these different entities who are utilizing this equipment. And from in a, in a uh, laboratory setting, they're extremely smart and they know the equipment through and through. But in a practical setting, they really lack the actual practical skills. And that's kind of, I think, the difference in what, what he's kind of alluding to here is that, that that's, I think, really where this is going is that you guys will actually have practical skills and be able to safely operate, not just knowing about the aircraft, because that's, that's good and great information as well, but you're actually going to be able to utilize the equipment, which in, in my world, I've seen professionals who pay, get paid high, high dollar, and they don't even know how to operate their own equipment. So, oh, they crash their own equipment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're literally, they're supposed to be the experts, and we have a crew of people all watching, and they crash, they crash right in front of us. So I mean, granted, there can always be mechanical error on the on the part of the equipment side, but um, there's definitely something going on. Uh, it, it was apparent in my situations that the individuals operating the equipment weren't the most experienced. And not to say that you guys are going to be the best of the best, but you're going to have at least a start, which yeah. I think a lot of people don't have. Right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So so these three guys sitting right here, for example, have way more experience than almost anybody. Uh, in the county probably or, or 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 the vast vast majority of folks much more experienced than the folks that are regulating this much more experienced than the folks that would potentially hire you to go work somewhere so so yeah so the applied stuff is really key another thing that i want to emphasize is that we're very much an interdisciplinary group so we got computer just in this little class we got computer science we got bio we got esrm we got that stuff um, we're really interested in all aspects of this technology. So again, we're not a traditional engineering program that's coming at it within certain walls. And we're, we're gearing up, we're not quite there yet, hopefully by the end of the semester we'll be there, um, to be a, a testing and evaluation center for our part of the state. Um, and so one facility, this is a facility up here that the administration told me we can't be in because it's dangerous or something. So of course we wouldn't be there. Um, but last year we were, before they told me it wasn't legal. So, so we're in the process of getting the old barn fixed so that we could be in there. It's a great space for us to fly and stuff, but, but we have a lot of unique spaces like that to do this testing and do this evaluation. Um, you know, I think rather than going to go into the history of how we got here, maybe I'll pause and I'll save that for either later today or, or next week. So um, why don't we take a quick uh, five minute stretch and we'll come back and I'll have Paul tell us a little bit about the, the background of um, some of our AARR stuff. Yeah. What's up, dude? Uh, 